Hey guys, it's Liz Kelly, and welcome to the Ringer Podcast Network. I want to tell you about our new show. Can I steal you for a second? The Ringer's Guide to Colton Season, streaming now on Hulu. The show is an inside look into Colton Underwood's season of The Bachelor, starring Ben Higgins, Rachel Lindsay, Lauren Zima, and our very own Juliet Littman. Make sure to tune in before Monday's finale for never-before-heard insight into all things Bachelor Nation. Streaming now on Hulu. Welcome to this week's episode of the JJ Reddick Podcast. Very excited to have a conversation slash catch up with my buddy, Chris Paul. Chris and I obviously played together for four years with the Clippers. I consider him a a close friend. I want to warn everybody, uh, we had and are still having a little bit of sound difficulties. As you can tell, there's a little construction going on in the background. We recorded this at the Four Seasons in Houston. So just bear with me at, at different points in the conversation. Um, there's there's a little background noise, and, and I apologize for that. But I love my conversation with Chris, and uh, let's get right to it. All right, this is round two with CP. CP, thanks for joining me today. I, I actually want to, I'm going to start with what we were just talking about. Just, you know, getting older, mm. getting hurt, coming back from injury, and still sort of working at your craft and figuring out uh, new things about your body. And when you had your hamstring injury earlier in this season, yeah. what kind of reassessment did you do on your own, on your own body and on sort of on your own training method? It's crazy, Bubs, but I think back to even the last time we did the podcast in LA. And one of the things that we talked about a lot was how much we both take pride in taking care of our body. I get to the gym and I have my routine and you get to the gym and and have your routine. And it's crazy. One of the things I always paid attention about you was you didn't shoot for long, but when you did shoot, you went at game pace. Right. You know, and it's, it's funny when I got hurt, I was, I was mad. I was real mad, you know, as you, as you probably know, uh, just cause I feel like I do everything possible, you know, whether it's, Norma Tech is Epsom salt baths, is stretching, is doing all this different type of stuff. So I just tried to go back to scratch, like to the drawing board, just had my body assessed and tried to figure out everything that I needed to do for my body in general to be as efficient as possible. Was there anything specific you discovered in regards to your hamstring? You just said to me, I was like, I have better posture now. Yeah, yeah, man. <laughs> but is there something that you're like, oh, I'm doing this now? over the last couple of months and you feel like it's made a huge difference? It's a lot. It, it's a lot. I feel like my core got stronger, my back, obviously my hamstrings, uh, my glutes. You know, yeah. we, we've had many conversations. A lot of times when your hamstring go out, it's because your glutes stopped firing and it started, right. you know, working too hard and things like that. So still a work in progress, but I, I feel a lot better than I did before. We're going to go to where I wanted to start, and that's the fight with Rondo. Oh, my (laughs) God, Bubs. First of all, I did not know you had it in you. I didn't know you had it in you. First and foremost. I was watching the game, and I I was literally, it was like a surreal experience because I'm like, what is happening right now? What did Chris just do? You know what's crazy (laughs) is people probably think that we talk like before we do these interviews yeah. and say like, okay, this is cool to talk about. This isn't cool to talk about. <laughs> I didn't warn you out about of this everything, one. Out of everything to think that we was going to talk about, I was like, what are, what are, what are the possibilities me and Bubs going to talk about? <laughs> this did not cross my mind. I just didn't think it had it in you. But let's go to, uh, you, you've rehashed, and I'm sure Rondo's rehashed, kind of the, the, mm-hmm. the moments leading up to the slugfest. We'll call it a slugfest. You get back in the <laughs> locker room. <laughs> You've yeah. calmed down a little bit at this point. Not really. <laughs> what is going through your mind in the, in the locker room? What's going through my mind? I mean, you've been, I this know, is I your 14th, 14th year. year. Yeah. You've never thrown hands before. No, in the NBA? No, 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 no. Yeah. It's crazy. I got back to the locker room and I was, you know, obviously mad. And then everybody on our team back there looking at it. And 
that's when I seen that Brandon Ingram came in and, you know, whatever. Uh, I didn't know that on the court until I got to the back. So then I got mad all over again. <laughs> you know what I mean? But, uh, you know, it is, it is what it is. You move on. Pay that hefty fine. Ooh. When you're making 40 a year. Sheesh. Just f- the, the- I always used to say if I was going to get in a fight, it was going to be on my rookie deal. Right. <laughs> it was going to be on my rookie deal. I, I just, it's remarkable to me that, now, no, don't take offense to this, yeah. but you talk a lot of shit. You're feisty. No, I don't, first and foremost. Like I always tell you, you Bubs, I will only say something to you if you say something to me first. I always say that, and you know that. No no question. I won't but say once, anything to you, you if, but, unless you say something to me first. But when you get provoked, you talk shit. If you and say something feisty. to me first. Yeah. When you're provoked. Absolutely. What, what I always say, in, in that if I'm playing a game or whatever it may be, uh, if if I do a move or hit a shot or whatnot, I feel like I've practiced it so many times that I expect to do that. Right. You know what I mean? Some people say they like to talk junk and all that, but I always think if you need to do that, you're almost surprising yourself. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Like, seriously. So I'm never going to say anything to you unless you say something to me first. And yeah, I'm feisty. That's the way I play or whatnot. Right. So no, the, it the, is what the, it is. You got to have your edge. But what I found interesting about the skirmish, if you will, mm-hmm. was just the the reaction and the perception of it in 2019 or 2018, I guess, when it happened versus like when we first came in the league. Right. You came in right after the Ballast at the Palace. Yeah. And then, I don't know if it was my rookie year, your rookie year, when um, Denver and the Knicks had a little, had a little brawl Dang, what year in the was garden. That? I don't know what year. I know Nate was. was in the league. So it was either, it was either Nate's rookie year or second year. And the reaction to this one, it was more joy from from the blogosphere. There's like a level of entertainment now. Like, oh, it's okay if these guys do this. They're here for us. They're here for our entertainment. Maybe. Maybe because it was just like us two and it wasn't like a whole... I obviously didn't spill in the stands. Nobody's right, beating right. up fans. Yeah. Like, yeah. We got into it at Wake. <laughs> we was in the corner. You used yeah. to be hitting them threes, talking all that shit. You talked about Hold on that. a second. So... <laughs> I'm you used go to back. be talking reckless when you was at Duke, Bub. You know I, I was talking reckless, <laughs> but in this in this specific case, this was my sophomore year, your freshman year. We're playing at Wake Forest. We're right in front of the bench. You were talking to me. I try to do the trick where I cut through the lane and reach up under your arm to draw a foul, and then you just got right in my face. I went to the corner and you got right in my face. I got close like, to you. You you mother f me. <laughs> I got close to you. You used to be running and slapping the floor, doing all that three three, three. and then I. I don't know. I don't know. I would, was it a shove or a? It wasn't a slap, but it was. Oh, no, it was a. It wasn't spit, it, so you was cool. It was like a. It was like a push to your face, <laughs> hands on your face. Did you see Adam Silver's comments uh, about uh, player player happiness by any chance? No. Okay, so basically, I think this was at Sloan Sports Conference. Yeah, at the Sloan Sports Conference, he gave a talk and he was talking about just. NBA players having just a general sort of level of anxiety and unhappiness. He called it a generational issue. His two main points were basically that guys are isolated because of, you know, headphones and social media, the pressure of like living in this sort of amplified fishbowl that we all live in now with with social media. Headphones? Like headphones. Like, you know, guys get on the plane, bus, whatever. Right. Right. Like, you know, everybody puts their headphones on, listens to their music or watches their Game of Thrones or whatever it may be. Right. Do you feel like over the course of your career that, well, number one, do you think guys in the league, do you agree with his it's comments? Like, do you think guys are unhappy? Do you think the the, the vast majority of players are no, generally absolutely. unhappy? I don't, I don't believe guys are unhappy. I just think that, you know, we've both been in the league for a while. Things change uh, as far as social media, media in general. I think guys... You know, because they have their headphones on or whatever, walking into the arena, maybe they're just listening to music (laughs) and they're just trying to find a time to sort of be to themselves. You know, like that's valid. I don't think guys are just generally unhappy. I think a lot of time you you really think guys are unhappy. So here I struggle with I struggle with this because I I see both sides of this notion. Bob Myers, who you obviously know, he's uh Golden State GM or president, whatever his title is now. So he was my agent when I first came out. Was he? Yeah. And I remember my second year when I wasn't playing a lot, we we had a bunch of late night conversations, mm-hmm. um, me venting to him 
And I remember something that stuck with me ever, ever since, but he said to me, he's like, you know, we represent 50 some clients or whatever it was at the time. And he's like, I would say five are happy. Right. He's like, even the guys who are making a ton of money and get taking 20 shots a game. He had a client at the time. He's like, he takes 20 shots a game. He just signed at the time, a huge deal. It was like four for 50 extension. And he's unhappy. He's like, I have maybe three or four clients that are legit happy. I kind of agree with that assessment. Think about how many guys in the league on a day-to-day basis are like really, really enjoying it. No, no. I I believe there is something you know, right about what he said, but I don't think that guys are just like, this is the dumbest thing I've, I've ever done. You know, what, what I think is that obviously everything that we do now, there's really no privacy, you know, and that's our own faults, you know, and that we put a lot of our things on social media or whatnot. I think some guys genuinely want to hoop, you know, go home, chill with their families or whatnot, you know, but this is a business. This is entertainment. This is what we do. So some of this is what you signed up for. Sort of, kind of. Yeah. You know, so it's, we got to just try to find a happy medium, which I don't know what that is. I don't know the answers to it, but happiness isn't money. No. That's one thing that we do know. Happiness is not fame by any means. I was telling somebody with our team the other day, this is what's crazy, is when I got hurt in Miami, it was like on the 21st or the 22nd of December. And as you know, I always bring my family out for Christmas. Right. So... 40 of my family members had just landed in Houston, right? And I always get so excited to see my family and to know that they all were coming to Houston and going to be at my game on Christmas Day. Uh, I got hurt in Miami that night. And as you know, I go to a dark place. <laughs> like, seriously, when I, I get hurt, I always say some people like to play basketball, but I have to play, like, for my sanity. And we flew back to Houston. I came home, was upset. I had an MRI scheduled for the next day. That morning before my MRI, my kids had their Christmas chorus stuff at school. And so I went with my parents, my wife, my in-laws, and I sat there hamstring on fire, you know, thinking about this MRI, but it was perspective. You know what I mean? As pissed as I was about my hamstring injury, I was like, you know, God works in mysterious ways. He put me here to really understand, like, this is happiness. Right. You know, seeing my kids, you know, here at school doing what they love, you know, as, as much as you think you need basketball and the money and all that stuff for happiness, like, this is real happiness. So using you as an example, and I've never asked you this before, mm-hmm. but during the course of a year, you're, you're, you're on a max deal. You were on a max deal before this. You're mm-hmm. an all-star. You're all NBA. You're a Hall of Famer. All right. You've had some level of control in your career, which most guys haven't. But I would assume there's still, even take away the injuries, there's still low low points, right, during the season. What? There's still dark moments. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. And, and I think that's sort of what Adam was getting at. Yeah. That, that, that's one component of what he was getting at, is just... I don't know if it's because it's just constant sort of results based and win loss and instant reaction. And obviously you're internalizing things and then there's the external sort of reaction to everything. And it's just, it's, it seems constant. It It is constant. And it's actually a conversation that I actually had, had with Adam about uh, not, there's no woe is me or anything like that for an NBA player, but no, not at all. As, yeah. as, as you know, this, this is the way it works for us. You play a game, say it's on national television. Let's say 7.30 game. Game gets over, 9.30, 10 o'clock, right? Crazy emotions of the game. And, and you know, because I'm, I'm, I'm going to get to how you were involved in this story in a second. And you go to the locker room after the game, cold tub, all that. You get ready. Boom. Say you got another road game the next night. You go right to the airport, get on the plane, and fly maybe three hours, three and a half hours, and sleep. You talk about sleep, and I don't even know if I can say this, Buzz, but you know, I'm I'm scary when it comes to like taking pills or yeah, yeah, yeah. anything like yeah. medicine or anything like that. Like I think everything is placebo. <laughs> but you remember when you get on the plane and you take the, the Lunesta or yeah, 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 whatever. Yeah. Like sleep and I'll be like, Buzz, what is that? You'd be like, <laughs> No, I, w- I was Tamazepam at the time. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I'd be like, Buzz, what is that? I stopped taking that. I did <laughs> yeah. melatonin. You'd be, just like, straight- <laughs> you'd be like, Helps me go to sleep. And I, what I used to say, all right, you mess around, get that eternal sleep. <laughs> yeah, right. Right. <laughs> but 
you know, for, for players, we, we travel and we get to a hotel and everybody just expects everybody to go right to sleep. It's possible. Don't want us to drink. We shouldn't drink because that's going to affect, you know, our recovery. Performance, recovery. Yeah. Yeah. They don't want us to smoke marijuana, weed or whatnot because we're going to get tested and all this different type yeah. stuff. And then any other extracurricular activity, <laughs> mess around, mess up your home life. Like, how do, you know, we come down from this roller coaster that we're on? Right. There's a lot of physiological components to this. Right. You know, you, you nap on game day, right? Yes, so I nap on game day. I, I don't nap on non-game days because I can't sleep if I nap, if I take a long nap. But I take a two-hour nap on game days. I wake up from that and it's like four o'clock, five o'clock, whatever. And then I have a cup of coffee. You're yeah. not supposed to have coffee after like noon, right? Really? I have a cup of coffee. <clears throat> so then, so you, there's two things going against me right, right away. Right. Then you play the game, okay? So you've got sort of the adrenaline from the game. Yeah. Then, depending on the result of the game, you're going to have sort of a an emotional reaction to that, right? Absolutely. You have a great game. Oh, you're you're on cloud nine. <laughs> right. You have a bad game. Right. You, you're yeah. you talk about going to a dark place. Yeah. All of a sudden, it's three, four in the morning. I probably shouldn't say this, but last night, like you know, we lost mm -hmm. travel. You know, second night of a back to back. We got in Houston, one forty five, two o'clock. Got to the hotel about two fifteen. Now I went to bed close to five. Right. Because I wasn't using any of those sort of <laughs> right. other things, right? No, that's real. And that's... And then you extrapolate that over 82 games. Hmm. It's... I don't know. Adam, to me, Adam has a point. Like, we, we both can look at each other with a straight face and say, look, we're going to just take the, the money side out of it. Like, mm -hmm. obviously, we have incredible lives. The things we're able to do in the off season with, you know, to provide for our families right. and it's insane. But you said it earlier, like, this is what we signed up for. Right. But I don't know. It just seems like this should be an ongoing conversation between the players association and the league about coming up with sort of solutions. Cause there is a, there is a, a physical health and there's a mental health component to this. Absolutely. I don't know. No, you, you, you're absolutely right. And I, I think, you know, the, the union and everybody continues to do work, you know, Al Harrington yeah. or whatnot. And there's a number of different guys in our league who've been doing research on, medical marijuana, whatever it may be or whatnot. Yeah. I don't know the answers, but I do know something hopefully has to change. Right. Because, you know, Bubs, I think a lot of times people see the nationally, nationally televised games and they almost think that that's the only time that you're playing. <laughs> you know? Right. It's like if, if you play on national TV, you have a game, but if you're not on national TV, you out chilling somewhere. Right. You know what I mean? They don't realize that right. that game is just on league pass. <laughs> And sometimes they don't even mention on the national televised game if if one team's like on the second night of a back to back. Oh no, they won't mention that. No, 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 no. And they, oh, they got into the hotel at three. By the way, the other the other part of this thing with with Adam's comments is just the whole the nature of connectivity of a team, hmm. and kind of leads into my next question, just about sort of things that have changed in the league since you've been in and since I've been in. You know, we we were a year apart. Do you feel like guys hang out more? Is there more or less camaraderie on bus, plane, you get into a city, are guys going to dinner? Like, I remember we had this conversation in LA when you would talk about your time in New Orleans. Right. And you'd be like, yeah, we used to go to dinner, maybe eight to 10 guys. It was almost every trip. We right. had a crew. And there's still some level of that, I think. But like, I think the whole group dinner thing, it's really dissipating. Yeah. And I honestly, just to be thinking that is, you know, me and the team that I'm on, but it's funny. Last year, our, our team, we did that a lot more often than this year. But uh, we've had our moments this year. It's crazy. Uh, after we beat Boston and went to Toronto, our whole team did something together. And I don't know if it's age. I don't know what it is. I, I really don't. I always say to me, I'm not getting old by no means. But I actually enjoy when we do those dinners on the road. Yeah, And you go out because... Me, you know, I'll just sit in my room and order room service and watch every game that comes on every night. But um, those dinners are really good. And even when you're in the same city, I think that's probably what I miss more than anything is that like way back in New Orleans, uh, when we played there, Tyson, D. West and all us, because say we had a stretch of three or four home games, then one of those nights we would all go to somebody's house. And I don't know if teams still do that or whatnot, but. Yeah. yeah, I'm I'm guilty of that because 
I don't even live in the city that I. Oh in. yeah, no, I know you live. <laughs> so in I'm not really like, but it's it's crazy because part of it is life too. Like yeah. life changes. Yeah, like bugs. It, like you can describe all the different times in your career, like before Chels, after Chels. Like you right. know what I mean? Like uh-huh. I always talk about. It. Like I have before Jada moved in, after Jada moved in, before kids, and then with kids when real school starts. Yes. Because now the alarm yeah. go off once, at 6.15. Once, once they move past the, yeah. the newborn it, it phase. Yeah. It ain't, well, it ain't preschool no more. Yeah. Preschool, you could wake up after a game day and be like, oh, you ain't going to school today. <laughs> you know, but now right. those absences count. <laughs> <laughs> Hold that thought, Chris. We're going to take a quick break. With two-thirds of guys experiencing noticeable hair loss by age 35, most guys assume losing their hair is inevitable as they age. Some don't care, some shave their head, some embrace hats, but what they don't know is that there are FDA-approved medications designed to stop hair loss and even regrow hair. That's why we're excited to partner with our sponsor, Roman. Roman makes it easy to get safe, FDA-approved hair loss treatment all from your phone or computer. And when you go to GetRoman.com slash Reddick, your online visit is free. Consult with a U.S. licensed physician through their secure online platform. There's no awkward conversations with receptionists or reading bad magazines in the waiting rooms. Once your doctor ensures that treatment will be safe and effective for you, Roman's dedicated pharmacy can ship your medication to you with free two-day shipping in discreet packaging. If you're noticing unwanted hair loss, starting treatment early is key and Roman can help. And today, Roman is giving the JJ Reddick podcast listeners a free online visit at GetRoman.com slash Reddick. That's GetRoman.com slash R-E-D-I-C-K. GetRoman.com for a free visit to get started. Go to GetRoman.com slash Reddick. And now back to my conversation with Chris Paul. In summary, but this thing with Adam and his comments, like I'm not unhappy. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a happy person. Right. That's not to say that I don't feel anxious at times, right? Yeah, uh, anxious about a future game, anxious about, a, you know, you just shot one for ten. I, <laughs> I just went through one of the worst yeah. shooting stretches of my career. Right. I'm like you're, you're anxious, but I would say the, the validity of what he said, I, not the unhappiness part, but I do think. And I don't, I don't want to admit this public, but I will. I do think at times, I, I, I do feel like guys feel lonely. I, I feel lonely sometimes. I feel lonely all the time. Yeah, Bubs, listen. And that's where I think he's that his his comments. I, that's where it struck home with me no. when he started talking about that feeling of isolation. And it's so weird because we're not playing tennis, we're not playing golf, we're we're playing a team sport. Yeah, and I and I believe that guys feel that just across the league in general. I 100 percent agree with that. There's a whole lot of truth in that, in that we travel a lot. You know, it's a lot of time in that hotel room by yourself or in the weight room or on the court or something like that. So it it can be tough. And like you said, everything that you do is analyzed and scrutinized now. And it's, it's one of those things that's tough to talk about sometimes because everyone doesn't understand until you are put in that situation of almost being in that bubble. Like, yeah, you're happy that people love you and you have fans and things like that. But if you want to just go out and get something to eat or whatnot, you know, you just always have to be on. It's one of those things. And, you know, the day that we live in now, if you're not on in one occasion and someone catches you at a really bad time, then what, bubs? (laughs) <laughs> your dick it's, and it's, it's going to be everywhere right you know so it's, it's, on, it's, it's on Instagram TMZ it's tough so yeah. I think that's what guys battle with is they just they just want some of that a long time at times when I had you on the podcast three years ago or almost three years ago I asked you uh, about your legacy and you said I'm not even thinking about it you actually just completely dodged the question yeah um, but uh, you're a little older now mm. and um, you know when I look at you know, not to, I'm not trying to be funny here, but you know, the banana boat crew, like th- right. these are the guys that, you know, you're close with in the league. And obviously you have, we talk about Trevor Reza, you have a bunch of friends, yeah. you know, besides these guys, but in terms of the, the, the star players, like D Wade's retiring mellows, you know, arguably one of the, the, the richest unemployed people in the world right now, <laughs> <laughs> LeBron passes Michael Jordan last night. Crazy. You have started to move up Pass some people on the all-time steals list, all right. all-time assist list. <clears throat> and I missed a lot of games, um, Bubs. Do you, have you started to think about your legacy? Probably more so now than I did then. Yeah. And I was telling the God honest truth when I said it then. And it's it's crazy. I mean, talking last night, uh, we hit Braun in our little group chat, just the fact that he passed MJ. 
you know, and in the moment, you don't think about it. It's just like, yeah, he did it. But, I mean, I think back to me and him playing in the Jordan Capital Classic. You know, like, that's that's crazy. And then the other thing for Braun, the fact that he just passed MJ, is this ain't one of those, I just put you in at the end of the game, you hit a three so you could pass him. <laughs> right, he's still in his prime. What? Yeah. Man, I mean, obviously I'm a little biased, but I absolutely see Braun being one when he's done. I've said that. Yeah. I agree. Yeah, absolutely. And he's, I actually, he's he's goat status to me. But maybe it's because he's my contemporary, but and it's one of those things too where they asked me about it the other day. Uh what's the topic of conversation right now? Should the Lakers shut him down and all that? For what? The way he takes care of his body, the way he trains and stuff like that. You shut it down when you're hurting. <laughs> right. You know, so uh in that aspect of it, uh then you talk about D and to see him in his last year, it's weird. It's so weird. Uh, and I'm the emotional one of our crew. And we had talked about, you know, when we may be done or how long you going to play or how you how long you going to play. And for it to really be here for D, I, I don't like it. Seriously, like I don't like it. Do you not like it because it reminds you of your own sort of mortality no, as a player? No, no. It, it's not that it reminds me. Or it of just my... makes you sad that you're not going to get to see him play anymore. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I get that. Yeah. Some nights I watch their games and I'm like, yo, he's still, he can still do so yeah. much. And, and he could. And yeah. that's why I'm happy for him because he's not done playing because he can't play. You know, that's the thing that you yeah, want to go out on, on this game, you know, healthy. And I think for me, especially with my new training and all that stuff like that. It got me excited again. <laughs> it got me excited again and, and feeling really good. But when I think about legacy, I don't know, man. I, I always say this, but I'm just always so engulfed in the moment yeah. that it still surprises me to see even people like with my shoes or anything. And my mom sent me this article this morning because mom is always going to be mom. <laughs> <laughs> my mom sent me this thing this morning. It says, you see it? It's at 820. And it yeah. says this, Taja Cole takes pride in sharing basketball, a girl that plays at Georgia. My mom sent me this. And I clicked on it. I was like, why is my mama sending me this? And in the article, she plays at Georgia. And she was talking about how she likes to try to run her team like Chris Paul. And I never get used to that. And I was like, what? Yeah. <laughs> you know, so I guess that is the, the cool part about it when you start thinking about legacy. But for me, as you know, like in the moment, I'm let's let's get to it right now. It's what's made you so great for so long. It, it, it honestly is. By the way, I don't know if we talked about this, but I, like last August, I'm completely off social media and I've talked about this a bunch on the podcast. Mm -hmm. So I don't get like a lot of the news anymore, but my freaking dad always sends me these articles, right? And it's like the parents have the Google alert on their phone for that, their kids. That, that <laughs> must that's, be it. That's exact. Because send me these articles. I'm like, Dad, this is so obscure. How did you find this? Well, I don't well, get it. It's so crazy that you said that. So. Obviously, during the playoffs, like, I get off social media or whatnot. Yeah. But I, I was off social media. Even after the playoffs got over last year, I was still off for a while. And to each his own, do whatever you want to do and all that stuff. But is it not an amazing feeling? Because oh. it almost, you always be like, man, what did we do before this? Like, it's actually good not knowing a lot of information as far as, like, what's going on with everybody else's lives. No disrespect <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> to anybody else, but... It's cool just to be engulfed in what you're doing and in that moment. I think I, I, I had a definite sort of uh, FOMO. Like, uh, like, just like I had that feeling like this mm -hmm. is, if I get off, what am I going to miss out on? I'll be honest with you. One of the things that I missed out on was NBA Twitter. The I night you got you, in a fight. The I night you, you got in a fight. In it. I <laughs> Dude, know I would have been on there till two in the morning. Oh, just, my God. <laughs> oh, my God. I know, I know you brought up the playoffs. Last year, going against Golden State, you guys are up 3-2, end of game five. You hurt your hamstring. I felt for you. Like, it was an emotional moment for me. I can't imagine sort of what you were going through. And I, just the way you grabbed your leg, the look, mm. the look on your face. I hadn't seen that before, but I, I just knew that look. Yeah. And the interesting part to me is like, I can't remember when it was in LA, but you had an injury, I think, in the playoffs at one point. And... I remember you being back in the locker room and just kind of what you're talking about earlier. Like I do all this stuff like, and now the body fails me. What, what was going through your mind and, and how hard was that? Man, a lot of stuff went through my mind. First of all, it's like 
dang, if I'd have just gave the ball to James over there <laughs> and wouldn't have <laughs> tried to drive, maybe I'd have been cool. It was little Chris's birthday. That was on the 24th. Yeah. And I'm back in the locker room after the game and getting treatment. And Chris walking there. He's like, Daddy, you all right? <laughs> you know what I mean? I'm just happy we up 3-2. And I don't know. I, I felt it. it. It felt pretty bad. Like when you did that and you get back to the locker room, did you know, like, oh, I'm not going to be able to play the series? Yeah, pretty much. That was one of the worst, worst ones for sure. I felt it. And what's crazy is obviously the injury was tough, but you know what was even tougher? Game six. Game six. As you know, Bubs, I got crazy anxiety. <laughs> crazy anxiety. I don't like to fly. You know what I mean? Like I got crazy anxiety. So when I walk out on the court for game six and I'm out there, you know, it's crazy and Oracle and I got on my team issue warm up or whatnot, <clears throat> I started to look around. I started hyperventilating. A lot of people don't know that. And Gene... Gene was right there with me. He took me to the back real quick. I had to go uh, to the bathroom because I was like close to throwing up or about to damn near pass out. I was so nervous and so anxious, and I never feel that when I play. But it was the simple fact that I had no control over yeah. what was about to happen. And it was such an important moment in your career. I mean, you <clears throat> obviously getting in the conference finals was a huge deal. I, I think I think I texted yeah, you yeah, after yeah. you guys yeah. beat Utah. But it was such an important moment in your career. So I think some of it was that, you know, for sure. Like getting that far. And it was our team. It was just everything about it. You know what I mean? Like was that team. was that one of the like last year's team, was that one of the one of the special sort of teams, special groups in your career? No question. No question. That team, we sort of built it. You know, everything from our defense to the camaraderie that we had. And I always say it, we were like a gang, like a real live gang in that, you know, you've been on some of those teams before, I'm sure. Like you say something to one person, you saying it to all of them. You know what I mean? And once you have something like that, it's pretty special. You're always trying to build it, you know. And what was what was harder or more difficult, more devastating? I don't I don't know what the word is, but. Yeah. Last year or, or 2015 when we were up 3-1 and, and lost to Houston? Man, you know, it's crazy, man. I, one of these days, I'll probably write a book or something like that. <laughs> you know, it's crazy because, you know, adversity, you know, it builds you. It makes you who you are. And unfortunately, I've had a lot of adversity when it comes to, to basketball, you know. And that 3-1 was tough. Oh, you're talking about Houston? Yeah. Oh up. yeah, yeah, yeah. I was I went back to that OKC. Oh my god! When I freaking tried to draw the foul, and then you know who called the foul on me on the wing down to came back during the summer. What do you say? It wasn't a foul or something yeah, like that. Yeah. Well, let's go back like y'all did last <laughs> night. <laughs> we did. Last let's night. go back like y'all did last night, in Chicago. But three one was tough. That was tough because I forgot about that OKC series. Yeah, that was our, my first year. Your third year in LA. Yeah. They all kind of run together. I feel like they're all disappointing. <laughs> it, it, they're it all is. really it disappointing. Is. And then 3-1 was the Houston series. And then it was 3-2. And then that was game six that we lost. At home. At home. Up 19. James on the bench. The whole fourth quarter. Oh, my God. It's the Josh Smith and Corey Brewer show. Inbounds. Unbelievable. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. But it's... It's crazy, man, how, like, life happens. And we had our times there in L.A. You know we had our times. But it's it's a lot of times where we talked about J.P., Jason Powell, that's with the Clippers. I talked to J.P. every week, all the time. Me and D.J. talk about every day. Uh, remember Epe? Yeah. Epe? Me oh, and yeah, Epe. yeah. Me and Epe sure. talk all the time. That's that's my guy right there. Are you there. in his book club? Yes. Yeah, Are yeah, you really? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> I got the shirt and everything. That's Epe, amazing. That's but it's me and Joe Ingles. I talk to Joe all the time. Joe all the time. And it's, it's crazy how me and JP talk about it as much as people always write our story of when we were in LA. Sure. Uh, I'm, I miss you guys. I know. You know what I mean? Like fam, like Jamal. Jamal just texted me the other night and was like, Fam, lay. Like I, when you read a text from you him, you can hear him saying. You hear him that. saying. Yeah, he said you're looking good out there, man. So like, I, I miss, I miss you guys. Honestly, I do. I just saw DJ and DJ and I texted a bunch. And I know we talked about it earlier with DJ after he got traded, but I texted him a bunch that first few days. We played them right after that, 
and uh, we spent some time together before the game, and it's just basically that that was the sentiment. Yeah, it was like we miss each other. Yeah. So here's an interesting interesting thought or question, but when summer of seventeen, you 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 uh, get traded to Houston. Lawrence Frank calls me and says, you know, we're not bringing you back. Those first. I talk to you while I'm at Mastros and like, oh, we talked that whole night. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Come to Houston. You, yeah, <laughs> I was ready to come, man. Talk to Daryl, man. Just talk to Daryl. Throwing a fourth year at me. But those first few months, man, like actually probably the first nine to twelve months, like I I wasn't in a place where I could look back fondly at my four years in LA at our time together. I don't know if it was bitterness or anger, or some of it was probably guilt as well. Just like that we didn't get it done. And now those, those feelings have, have changed, man. Like I, I look back at that and I'm like, what an amazing period of time in my life. What an amazing team to be on. You should hear the guys in Philly talk about our team, man. What? Just how good we were. Really? Yeah. Well, you know, I, I talk about it all the time too. In that, you know, in us building our team here in Houston, uh, we're so good at the way that we play. The biggest thing I always try to bring to the table is execution. It's one of the things we always talk about, execution. And it's so cool to see how much better we have gotten here in Houston. But, Buzz, you you know me and you, I was literally talking about us the other day, like Clint Capella, right? In my mind, I'm not that much older than Clint, but he be talking to me sometimes like I'm his granddad. <laughs> <laughs> but he talks about our Clipper team a lot too, and I was talking about us and how – uh, do you remember Chester? Yeah. Remember Chester? Chester yeah. Arthur was yeah. what president? He was the 21st president. 21st president. A, yeah. Because our execution and our play calling and everything was second to none. We had hand signals, eye signals, everything. Weird play calling. We so I'm talking about, No, 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 no. I got to say this tell, first because tell, tell I'm about the, to tell. I'm, okay. No, no. This might be the same story. I'm about to tell All it. Right. Here with Houston, we didn't sort of figure out other ways to say stuff so, you know, teams can't scout it. So I was letting the guys know the other day how we were on the free throw line and I yelled out, Savage. <laughs> I, was, I was like, Savage. Uh, for all those people out there listening, there's a play in the NBA that's called 21 or Pistol. Yeah, 21 or Pistol. 21 or Pistol. That's what teams are going to call it. So if you yell out 21 on the free throw line, everybody on both teams are going to know what play you're running. So we try to disguise it. And so I yelled out, Savage, right? Look over at Blake. Blake nods. <laughs> Blake's got the play. All right. DJ's got the play. Bubs looks, <laughs> throws his arms out in disbelief. What the hell is that? What the hell is that? If you <laughs> if you put 21 Savage, ding, 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 ding. In fairness to me, 21 Savage was a fairly new artist oh at the time. Oh, my God. <laughs> this guy I would right get here. that reference now. Oh, my goodness. So, so we, we, we went through like a, diff- a few different iterations of this play call. We changed it to the 21st president because yeah. we knew Bubs would know that. Yeah. <laughs> Chester <laughs> Arthur. <laughs> I know we called it Deion Sanders for a while, yeah, too. Yeah, then we called it, uh, we say Blackjack. Yeah, Blackjack. Blackjack 21. Yeah. And that is, you know... Life happens, you move on. It's crazy because we, after we played Golden State the other day, we were in the locker room and we were talking or whatnot just about how different teams have to have different identities. And I was talking to Austin and I was like, AR, me and your dad didn't always have the best relationship or whatnot. But one thing I always did was I always listen. Yeah. You know, somebody might say, man, you talk a lot. You talk, but one thing I do is I always listen. And you remember when we was in LA, Doc used to always talk about touching. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? You remember after every meet and just bring it in, just touch. And it just makes so much sense because with your kids, what do you do with your kids? You hug them, you kiss show them, but you love them, you kiss them, you touch yeah. them. And as a team, if you see me when we're out there on the court, you know, Bubs, yeah. I do talk a lot, yeah. but that's just because I want us yeah. to have that togetherness. Speaking of Doc, that, <clears throat> as I've been away from him, I, I've... <clears throat> Realized that he had a lot of nuggets of wisdom. Oh, absolutely. Me and JP I, was talking about that yesterday. I, I, I use like some of his docisms in my own life. All the time. I want to say one thing real quick about the execution part. Yeah. So we had a play in LA where, and we sometimes would call it, but Chris would bring the ball up. DJ would run into a high pick and roll with Chris, and then he would peel out. And run past Chris and then come set a pin down for me. Absolutely. And we get 15 a three. Down. 15 down, yeah. Come on, Bubs, you know that. And we would try to disguise it a few different ways. But 
when I'm done playing, like that play, I'll remember so much because of the connectivity, right? Oh. <sighs> right. You're, at, like, you're, I miss you're, you're throwing your hands <laughs> up. Yeah. Oh, you'd, you'd be yelling at DJ, you and me, you and Man, me, you and me. Pretty minute. And like, sometimes like I wouldn't even have, it'd be 16 seconds at the end of a quarter. And I just knew like, all right, DJ's going to peel out. He's going to come get me. And like, yeah. we just disguise it so well. First of all, there's two things that I loved about that play. And like, we had stuff with Blake, right? You and Blake had stuff and me and Blake yeah. had stuff. And, but there's two things I like about it. One, one is like the execution part. Like that, we always talk about it, how fun it is yep. to like trick a team kind of, you exactly. know, because everybody knows they, what we And they run. say it comes down to one yeah. possession. Right. And then the other part of it is like connecting with people, right? Like that's ultimately why we play basketball is, right. is having that connection and being able to, to execute something being a little slick with it, right? But execute it, and then kind of look at each other like uh, that was pretty awesome, right? You know that 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 feeling you get. I don't know. It's just those are some of the funnest times of the game for me as a point guard in the way that I play. I used to do it with Doc, and I even do it now with with Dan Tony and our coaches. Is you know that first play of the game or that ATO. You know we run it, and we execute it. I always look over at the coach, even when I play for Monty, Monty Williams. Yeah, Mont was great at that. X's and O's and all that. And I just, like when I'm watching games now, like uh, Brad Stevens is a, is, a, is a great mind like that. It's just, it's cool, man, because it's part of the game. It's part of the game. And like you said, with Doc and them Doc-isms, uh, I'm like that with Skip Prosser, my college okay, coach. Yeah, sure. You know, like if I ask you how you're doing, if I say, Bubs, how you doing? What you going to say? I'm doing well. How are you doing? Okay, good. All right. Because <laughs> <laughs> my college coach, uh, when I was in college, I would go in and he'd be like, Chris, you, how are you? I'd be like, I'm good. He'd roll his eyes and be like, I'm well. Like, I'm well. So for me now, anytime someone yeah. says I'm good, it pisses me off. <laughs> right. And so like even with Doc, one of the other things that, you know, Doc used to talk about was clutter. Right. I find myself using that word all the time now, too, in that he used to say, look, when you go home, and this is the truth, and everybody in the NBA knows is that if you go home and you didn't have a good game, everybody usually at your house going to be talking about how bad everybody else was <laughs> and not you. Right. And that's really clutter. Yeah, that's clutter. You know, that's clutter. And, you know, I'm a big believer in that. And that luckily I got my brother and my wife who I've been with for the longest who I can have a great game and they still going to kill me. Right, right. <laughs> you know, but that's real. Like if you go home and you let, you know, that stuff infiltrate you, then it's going to come out with the team, bubs. CP, it was great catching up, man. This man, has you been let a lot me know of fun. When we can finish it or something like that, you yeah, let me know. No, it's I'm all good. Real. We'll we'll get round three at some point soon. Um, I'll see you, I'll see you tomorrow night. Yep, for sure. <laughs> all right. All right. As always, thank you for listening to the JJ Reddick podcast. I want to thank today's guest, Chris Paul. Uh, it was great to catch up with him. If you have any questions or comments, please hit up the Ringer on Twitter, and uh, I will talk to you guys soon. Um, I believe next week um, I have a special guest, a, an up-and-coming musician named Dermot Kennedy. Really looking forward to having him on the pod. If you get a chance, check out his music on Spotify. That's Dermot Kennedy. Uh, I'll talk to you guys next week.